Number one, public meeting of August 8, 2011 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker's cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You'll be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current DRB agendas are available by calling our DRB hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and DRB reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the DRB decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at their discretion. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Ellis? Present. Mr. Insua? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Mr. Simonian? Absent. And Mr. Yu? Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on September 1st, 2011. Oral communications. Is there anybody in the audience who wishes to speak on an item not a part of this agenda? Have any cards by any chance? Don't have any cards. Okay. We will go on to our review calendar. I believe we have one staff announcement. Good evening, uh, Chair, Palmer, members of the board. We wanted to mention that on August 23rd, the City Council adopted a series of zoning code cleanups that there are just a few of those that will impact your work here. We will likely in the next um, few, in one of the next few sessions, we'll bring that forward, the staff report forward for uh, just as a discussion item so that you know what to expect out of that. The ordinance was adopted with many of these zoning code cleanups. We do this every year or two. On August 23rd, on August 9th, uh, you will find a strikeout underlined version of that. We'll provide all this information to you uh, when we agendize it. And those zoning code cleanup changes go into effect September 22nd of this month. Thank you. All right. Uh, We're down to the design review cases for tonight. The first and only one is uh, 1 PDR 2011 033 A. It's at uh, the project is located at 1241 Boynton Street. Before you start, I don't have any speaker cards if anybody in the audience is. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Kiso. Good evening, Madam Chair, Board Members. As mentioned, the only case for tonight is located at 1241 Boynton Street, case number, number 1, PDR 2011. Dash zero three three A. This is a first time submittal for final review. The proposal is to legalize some facade renovation that was done to an existing multifamily twenty eight unit building. Those changes included changing our windows, adding foam trim to the parapet, adding an arched entry at the second floor level, and replacing it with the uh, previously existing trellis type of entry. Also adding culture stone at the base of the building and altering some of the landscaping at the front. No particular changes were done to the massing of the building and the only changes to the site planning was the landscaping at the front. Everything else that was done was purely architecturally and design related. The existing building was built in 1959 there is only one photograph that we have, which was uh, obtained from 
Google Earth and it is posted right directly behind you. You can look at to see what the building looked like before the changes were done or changes take, took place. Staff has uh, reviewed the case, reviewed the project and at this moment staff cannot support the project and uh, would recommend return for redesign with five recommended conditions. I'll quickly go over those for you. One is to redesign the front landscaping to a more drought tolerant plant that better complements the building. Two is to provide horizontal and or vertical elements of different materials such as metal panels to help provide a more interesting architectural expression. Three, provide details that reinforce and enhance the design and the concept of the design. Four, if stone base is being used, staff would recommend raising the level the height of the base to the seal height of the larger window, which would be the lowest point of any seal. And finally, re replace the arched entry with m something more trellis-like or eliminate the arched entry and don't provide anything entirely. So that's my short or brief presentation. If you have questions, I'm available. The applicant is here in the audience, can answer questions for you as well. The questions from the board? I have a question. This project is coming before us it, as built. Were there building permits taken out on it? No, no building permits. If there were building permits taken out, it would have most likely not be here. It would have been. We would have seen it. At you some, would have the board would have seen, seen it, it before. It would have been something that staff could staff have exempted have done, at right. staff level, but things were done without permits. And this do we, is do we know when that was done? No, I, no. Okay. We do not know when. And this is basically okay. legalization. Okay, thank you. I, I think actually. Um, Someone in the neighborhood services um, uh, identified the work as it was being done or just after mm -hmm. most of it was completed. Um, I initially worked with the person, I want to say, nine months ago. Mm -hmm. It was so. within the last... Probably so. within the year this, the work has, has was occur or occurred. Okay, so that actually was a question, Maya. Th that um, it, be, it came to the attention <coughs> through neighborhood services. I think it was neighborhood services, yeah. But they had come to you earlier as a planning department. No, question. it came to us as a result of neighborhood services. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. okay, with that, shall we ask the applicant to come up? Just your name and address for the yeah, record, please. I'm Michael Cusimano with Cusimano Real Estate Group. Uh, my address is 101 South 1st Street, suite number 400 in Burbank. Uh, I want to just kind of you know, put some context into what had occurred um, with, with this particular project. This is a, a property that was built in the late 1950s, a property that we have owned for probably about 10 years. And um, one that Quite frankly, there had not been much work done to probably, you know, since it was built. Um, and, you know, as we looked at it, we felt it was really time to, to do something to kind of, you know, freshen the building up, replace some of the old landscaping. And um, initially the plan was to remove the pool from the center of the courtyard. Um, you know, the pools, quite frankly, are not used a lot today and they create some liability issues. And so that was our initial plan was to uh, paint the building. Um, freshen up some of the landscaping and take the pool out. And as we went out there, started talking to some of the tenants, uh, to our surprise, there was a... a I pa did you en end up taking the pool no. out? So the pool's still there? Pool's still there, and I've got pictures of that, if that's of interest to anyone. Uh, so we started to engage with some of the tenants, and um, you know they said, no, we really, really like the pool. And they began to participate a little bit in sort of the design process of, you know, and what they said is, gosh, it would be great if we could have some, add some landscaping into the courtyard, it would be great if we could have some tables and, and you know, create a much more usable place. And I've, and I've got pictures here of kind of the finished product of what we got. And so, you know, it started out as one project. It kind of evolved into something else. And, um, you know, at no point did we think that we were undertaking dramatic architectural changes. You know, it was our assumption that, you know, we were kind of just responding to some of the requests and, and just freshening up the building a bit. Um, you know, w w one of the comments uh, in the staff report is that 
the, the current project lacks identifiable architectural expression, and that's probably true. But if you look at the picture of the original building, you know, this late 1950s style clearly lacks any sort of interesting architectural uh, building. So it was our intent not really to change what was there, just to kind of clean it up. And so we went out, and as we were going through the process, the windows were the original 1959 aluminum, single glazed, um, untempered original glass. And so as we were out there, we were like, okay, well, I guess we need to change the windows. We didn't change any of the opening sizes. We didn't change anything. We just swapped out you know, the 1950s version for the, the, 19, uh, the 2010 version. Oh, regarding the question when the work was done, it was done last fall. So, um, you know, it, as the, most of this work evolved just in the field. You know, the workers are out there. They're going to replaster the building. It is boxy. There's not a lot of architectural elements to it in the original design. So, so you know, somebody in the field made the decision to add some foam around the windows. Uh, you know, we never thought that that raised it to the level of changing, you know, the character of the building. Um, you know, I can tell you I've taken a lot of people by the building for the before and after, and the, the difference between what was there a year ago and what is there now is dramatic. It, it is, went from being a very average-looking building um, on a street, quite frankly, of average-looking buildings to being, you know, the most attractive building on the street. Um, the tenants have been delighted in, in, in the end. So, um, you know, I, if I would have known how much work would have taken place a year ago when this whole process started, we would have you know, taken a different course and come through the city and, and talked through some of the changes that were made. Uh, you know, quite frankly, a lot of it evolved in the field. Quite frankly, I wasn't aware of a lot of it that took place. You know, there's a property management company and our construction company that has some guys that have some imagination and you know, we give them a budget and you know, they're dragging me out there saying, gosh, doesn't this look great? And I'm saying, yeah, it looks really great. Never thinking through you know, the implication of um, the Glendale design review uh, process. Now, we have undertaken similar uh, renovations um, in, in Los Angeles and North Hollywood and Burbank, multiple renovations a year. And um, generally in those processes, we're also undertaking seismic renovation, uh, renovating our soft story buildings. And so that's always permitted, it's always inspected, but we've never pulled separate permits for changing out the windows or adding the foam. And so I guess, you know, different cities operate in different fashion. You know, at no point did we think that we were doing anything that, you know, we we're trying to get away with something, quite frankly. So that's uh, where we, we, we find ourselves today. Um, you know, again, I, you know, I think if you look at what was there and, and what we have now, it's a dramatic, dramatic improvement. You know, I, I don't think that the Previously existing architectural intent has been modified. Um, you know, if, if we were to add elements and um, add some some finning or you know some other things, you know, then we would I think you know be trying to create some sort of an architectural element that, that maybe wasn't there previously. Um, regarding the arch, that's an interesting uh, thing that, that kind of ties the two buildings together, and it doesn't it's not real visible in the picture, but that element was wood previously and it was ready to collapse. And quite frankly, it was one of the reasons that we actually came out to the building. We said, you've got to do something about this trellis. It's going to come crashing down on somebody someday. And uh, you know, I was a little bit surprised because I think that new kind of little arch the way that's in there is one of my favorite elements. I think it, it ties those you know, two kind of boxy buildings together. But again, I'll defer to you know, whatever suggestions the, the board has. So I'm available for any questions and hope that provides some perspective on what ha has occurred. I have one question. Did you change out the windows in the entire both buildings, all the way yes. around, or just the front? All. So all the windows are vinyl now? Pretty sure. Okay. Let me look at my pictures. I may be able to. The sides didn't look that way. That's why I'm. Uh, they actually, yeah, there's a lot of questions on that. No, maybe not. You know, as I look in the courtyard, they're not changed. I didn't think they were. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I... So just in the front, then. That's what appears to me. Has staff looked I think at that? that? I think that's the case as well. When I, when I spoke with the, um, when I met with the person that was representing this case 
previously. I think, um, I think you can see it in this. that's what he said as well. It was just a front facade renovation. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Got a question for perhaps Roger. If or, or if, if this or any apartment today wanted to do a window take out like this project did the front would they have to put performance glass in there would they be would they have to have a higher degree of glazing than they currently have the reason i mention that is i have neighbors of mine who did we're going to do a window exchange very high quality custom glass or windows and glass um, mahogany frames so that it would then well, I think I even spoke with you about it. And they had to do performance glass and stuff. So my question is, having that fresh in my mind, would they be able to replace these windows as they did, or would they have to have a higher grade of performance glass? Um, that That's really a building code question. It's not something that um, I personally know off the top of my head. Typically, those determinations are Title 24 determinations that are based on the amount of work that you're doing, other work that's being done. There are other ways to, and as you know, enhance the energy efficiency of a project. So they wouldn't be required to do any specific window. I know that we often work with applicants and encourage them to maintain or restore their existing windows, particularly if their original authentic beautiful wood or steel frame windows which are hard or very expensive to replace and provide uh, an architectural characteristic. So I don't think that they're specifically required by the building department, but that would be something I would need to verify before giving a solid answer on that. Thank you, Ms. Frank. Another question if I can. This, I'm asking these questions so I want to get a sense of where this may go or where it may not have to go. And in addition to that, there are, in fact, many different types of windows that do meet high, the highest energy standards. So I'm trying to get a sense of where this may have to go, whether it's approved or not. So my next question is, let's say, for example, this project is approved by this board and it's done. Would they have to go out and get permits for the work that they've done? Would this would just be the planning approval? Then you've got to get permits. Okay. Because Absolutely. Because the reason I mention that is um, not to burden you with anything unnecessarily, but this is a, you know, um, well, you've added a, a, an element, although not structural, it, there is a lot of load in this archway that's being supported on a framed building that appears not to have been designed or engineered and approved. So let's say, for example, we say it's great, we love the aesthetics of it, this, you have to, you would then be compelled to then do the plans, do the plan check, and get your approval, at least for that element, and maybe the windows. We, we started, actually, we have a, a pending building application, which they accepted the application and put it on hold pending Very your good. review. Once we get, if we get approval here, then it's back to the building department to complete Very the good. permit, and then it's the inspectors and the whole Very nine good. yards. Very informative. Thank you. Okay. I have a better. Any other questions? Idea. Okay, I'm going to close the public session, and uh, Mr. Yu. Um, I think that we, you know, it's sort of the, the result that's there now, it's almost, in a sense, irrelevant in a sense that of what is there. I think we still need to go through the process that we regularly would on a project if it, if it was brought to us. And so, um, sort of to see this, we have to see it as, it's a it's a rendering and it's what they're bringing to us as a design and so we have to um, sort of critique it or you know take a look at it as a rendering and not in the back of our minds as you know it's this actual building that's already out there and it's all done and complete um, and I think in looking at it in that sense there are those things that staff mentions in their report that we would ask for in a regular project you know it's the idea of breaking up the box figure, you know, proportionally doing stone uh, versus sill, uh, foam, you know, we don't really, I don't think from, since I've been here, I don't, we don't usually approve foam as a, as a product to use around windows or as the top of the buildings and those kinds of things, so um, 
those are all sort of same criteria that we've we've been using, and so I think we have to judge it per that. Um, and so, I mean, short of just going through and actually pointing out which parts we you know we do like and we don't like, I think that's the way we have to see it. And I I do agree with a lot of the points that are in the the staff's report regarding those things. And um, I think that's sort of the jump off point for to start the conversation for me, Mr. Ellis. Um, and and I'm, I'm sorry that the, the applicant is here. I mean, if, if, to be honest, if this project had come forward, I, I'm stuck on the no permit issue. I'm stuck on the foam, just like you mentioned. It's, it's not something I would ever approve. I'm not crazy on the vinyl windows. If this applicant had been somebody who just moved to our community uh, and a few months ago from a, from a community that had no zoning, and, and you know, I, we've seen those projects, and I would have a I'd have to say I'm sorry, but that's not how we work here. Unfortunately, we have an applicant who, if you know, if he didn't know it, his staff should have known it. There was a, a failure in, to communicate, and uh, I totally agree with staff on this. I, I couldn't support it, even as, as Mr. Uh, you had mentioned. If it came up with the design as it is, there are a lot of different changes that I would say. Um, I think the noticing the project when I went out and looked at it, the, the elements are are stuck to the front. There's no consideration that there's a side of the building. It ends, bam, at the side of the building. Nothing wraps around. Um, I don't know offhand. I think the applicant mentioned that they did actually paint the rest of the building. I, I didn't quite see that when I was there. I didn't go onto the property. Um, I think uh, actually uh, I would disagree a little bit with the applicant that the building before had a little bit of character in it and that's totally gone. So I would not support currently. Uh, I'd like to see it come back with, with some thought to uh, to making a design that improves the building, not just gussies it up. And I think uh, the windows we discussed, uh, the, oh, one other note to, to the applicant, it, usually when the tenants like a project, there's at least a letter from somebody in support, and that we have seen nothing from the community uh, in support or, or in opposition, but at this point, I can't support it. Mr. Insula? Yes, Ms. Palmer. Um, I, I'm glad I was able and staff was able to give me information and the owner concerning the process if it was approved, whether it be approved today or approved in the future, there would still be that standard process of having the plans developed, go through plan check, get your permit, have, uh, and then have that work inspected. So for the general public, which we also want to be informative for them and provide them information, that's the process whether you do the work, you approve us. So those of us, those people out and they're listening and stuff, the process doesn't change. You always have to follow it whether you did the work or not with, with or without a permit. So, um, and there's often, there's often safety issues, although maybe not as much here, although that, that arch does concern me a bit. I couldn't agree more with my colleagues and my board members, Mr. Yu and Mr. Ellis. I, I, I won't add any more to what you said because that's the way I feel too. Uh, it's a shame that, that the project has gone this way, but if, as Mr. Yu said, if we had looked at this project as a renovation or as a new construction, uh, I'm pretty sure that the, the board would be um, adding, and staff would be adding a lot of comments and direction and, 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 and things that would make this building a much better building, and the building that we see before us in this rendering would not be something we approve and could not approve for the materials used, for the plainness of it, the applications and all that stuff. It's, we've never gone that way, and I'm sure we wouldn't have done it. Piggybacking on some of the comments that Mr. Ellis said, I also disagree with the applicant. I think the building does have an identifiable period architecture mm -hmm. that that is important. It's a period architecture from the 40s, 50s, and early 60s that I think really is it tells a nice story. And we, when we drive through these older apartment buildings with the name in front, you know, Glenval or the Thunderbird or whatever, it is good. It's that's that tells a story, and that's the history of these developments. Um, so I, I apologize, but I don't agree with the applicant at all. What I would have done if the applicant was saying early on of the design for renovation, I would have liked to have steered them in a direction which kept the integrity of that period architecture 
updated it. If, if, if the trellis on the top was dry rotted and it was a safety issue, all right, there's other ways to explore that same period. When I look at the photograph and I see the entrance, the way that the entrance has this, um, this uh, V, this, this, this chevron, and the chevron is then reflected with the trellis above, that, isn't, that is good architecture. Yeah. Um, I see the panel of, of material to the right of the, and that was period, to remove all that for whatever reason is not a good idea and you remove a lot of the period integrity of the architecture to get something that respectfully I think is really poor and we again we would not have approved it if it was a new construction so I, I think that they, they they did a bad thing that we can't support it and I support staff and their comments and we and something that I don't think that I could support either and I feel for the applicant because this is some some thing you don't want to do when you're a business owner or, you know the own apartments and properties well, when I, I support everything this uh, board and staff has said also, and when I look at this uh, original picture, you get that period feeling, and it also gives you a little sense of depth with the material changes, and it wraps around. When I look at the new product, I get a one-dimensional building, and that's all I see is a one-dimensional. There's no wrap around. And even looking at the, the landscape may have been old, but at least that landscape gives... It, I think it adds depth to the original building and a little variation. The landscape that's existing now, you have a row of palm trees, you have a mass of shrubs, and a one-face building. Um, I have to agree with staff and the board, I can't support this. I'm sorry it happened this way, but I, I think it is a lack of communication or over, overseeing what's happening, but or a lot of people's opinions coming in without uh, a cohesive opinion. So in reality, when you're on the site, I think it looks like the photo. It's the one-dimensional. That's all I have. Any other comments? This, uh, so uh, if, if I may um, try to summarize what you've, you've said, uh, I think we've heard clearly that there's agreement with uh, what staff has maintained in the report and with what Mr. Nazarian um, very briefly and thoughtfully presented. Uh, so I thank you for that clarity. Um, before I r read back the conditions, I'm wondering if, if you'd like me to do that or if the conditions as written um, if you agree with those, and then we can augment those based on what you've said. Um, maybe on the number two part where it's suggested metal panel. Um, I don't know if that's the direction that I would go, but I mean, depending on what they come up with, maybe I would take that out and just leave it open so they can determine if they want to follow the, maybe what was there before or something. I mean, I think metal panel would just be very specific. Okay, so the condition number two might read, provide horizontal and or vertical elements of a different material to help provide a more interesting architectural expression. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, what I what I have, um, what I think may be added to this as sort of an overarching condition based on your discussion is uh, is an overall comment that says something like, or that says, because we're trying to be precise in our <laughs> conditions, um, consider providing a design that enhances and updates the original design of the building. And further, I think another consistent comment we've heard is that the the new design should be a three-dimensional design, uh, not simply applied to the front of the building, but should wrap the building. Now, a question for you is, you know, very often um, with these projects, there is a more enhanced design at the front and not a fully enhanced design at the sides and the rear. So. Um, would we uh, suggest that the applicant should focus on providing some of the elements <laughs> of the design that wrap for a three-dimensional design and provide some level of flexibility so that the same design doesn't have to wrap the entire building? My comment on the three-dimension was not that they had to do the entire, it's a large building, right. but at least 
provide some depth when you're driving by, walking through, or uh, it makes it look like it wraps. Wrapping doesn't have to be the entire building. It can wrap around All right. 10, 12 feet, whatever's necessary. Yeah. And it can conclude in design. some rational way that makes sense. Okay, so um, two feet. I mean, if it's... we say provide a three-dimensional design that would have some elements at least wrap the building and terminate at logical locations. Right. So right, right now it, it ends. I mean, literally, bam, it was cut off with a saw, and it could it go around the corner at least finish the curve of the of the material um it depends I, on the material well exactly but you know with whatever the they come up with but at this point and maybe they can come up with something that can end but what they have on the building now doesn't work i know the comment that you put in regarding um trying to capture or maybe bring back sort of this idea of the original architecture i think that it, the sort of the the state that it's in, we've lost a lot of that already. And so, I mean, I would be open to either, you know, maybe trying to come bring that back or to come up with something that, you know, at least makes it better than what it is now. Okay, so... so I would just determined to just make it better from what it was. I mean, so an amendment to that, um, consider enhancing and refreshing that original design would be or provide an appropriate a design that's appropriate for the overall building. Right. What do you guys think? Because yeah. it seems like it's. I mean, it's. There's no point in trying to bring back something that you've already destroyed. So, it's at least given the option to. And, and this is perhaps this is for discussion among us. In, in keeping with what you said, Mr. Yu, how, what do you think about number four? It, it, it's real specific that if you add, if it's the stone or another material, get it up to the sill height. That may not be the best thing, you know. Right. And, it, it might need to I'm go higher. Sure the Who stone knows? Is yeah. the right, right, stone. right. So I would say number four. I would suggest we just remove it in its entirety. Okay. And let the yeah. architecture that we're we'll discussing now do what right. it's doing. Needs to do. Right. And I'm glad you clarified that because I was going to ask also about um, five is very specific. It provides, uh, I'll just read it out loud so our audience can hear it. Um, replace the arched entry piece with something that is more trellis-like and remove the columns or remove it altogether. So I think it depends on what design they come up with. Yeah, I think something is needed there, but Something's who knows what it is. To yeah. tie it together, but to specify that it be a yeah, it. trellis or remove totally, I don't think. Okay, so um, how about modify the arched entry piece, um, period, consider a more trellis-like, uh, more trellis-like element, remove the columns, or another design that's appropriate to the overall building design. Are you saying, <laughs> does that well. specifically <laughs> state that there should be something tying it together? I don't get that from your... Um, we, could, we could add, uh, there should be an element that ties the two building forms together. And, and this isn't it. <laughs> we could keep it general like that. <laughs> right. Oh, so oh. without the uh, modify the arched element, just say there should... Arched element. Yeah, arched element. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You've arched. been reading the news press, haven't you? <laughs> is, is not what's going to be necessary for whatever design they come up with. Okay, so um, provide an element that ties the two buildings together that's appropriate to the overall design. I think that's fine. I think we also, I want to add at least that, you know, foam, the foam is not a go. Um, did we not add that? It doesn't seem to be one of them. Oh, okay. So, um, so an additional condition would For be... Three, I that, think, sort of touches on oh. it in a more general sense. Let's like provide details. Okay, so could we add that to um, condition number three? Um, that would read, provide details that reinforced reinforce an enhanced design concept and also say uh, foam moldings without the use of foam I think would okay without the use of a foam yeah. period, period. Um, and 
there has been some discussion here about um, concern about the vinyl windows. Do do you have? Are, are you inclined to provide any conditions regarding the windows? I would just say, I mean, look, at, I, I'm not out to punish the guy. If they meet the current requirements, then you know, I live with the foam or with the vinyl windows. If they don't meet the current requirements uh, for uh, for energy efficiency and things, which would be required if they'd come, in, you know, early on. Then I would say uh, reconsider the vinyl windows. But yes. let's, let's find out if the but, vinyl windows, if the foam is the only depth that's created with the vinyl windows, or they just... You know, there's a, a section in here. I think I saw that. So, um, I because I, I would suggest that if we don't address it in, or you don't address it in the conditions, that there will be no consideration of them. So if you'd like, we can add a condition that says provide high quality windows and details appropriate to the design. The vinyl may not be appropriate to whatever design they come up with. Right. So if we don't address vinyl or no vinyl, we just say provide high quality windows appropriate to the design, then um, the applicant has some flexibility to maybe incorporate the windows that they've built in the design or provide a different window. Yeah, I can. I, that makes sense. That makes would you sense like to, to read them back? Uh, if I could just add one question. I believe we have a condition now which says provide a three-dimensional design uh, with some of the elements that wrap around the building. And I, I believe that the chair made kind of a similar comment about the landscaping. Well, I was going to say this number one comment about landscape with drought tolerant plants to better complement the building design. I think we also include the palms are not acceptable. Okay, situation. the palms are not acceptable. And would you like to all, you made a comment that the previously existing landscaping provided a sense of depth. Correct. To the project, should we all we could include that that better complements the building and provides a sense of depth to the overall landscape design, and suggests that the um, the proposed slash currently existing palms are unacceptable. Just are Any other comments? I think I'm okay. Do we have a motion then? I'll move to uh, return for redesign with the comments as discussed. <clears throat> Second. All right. So we have a motion made by Mr. Ellis to return for redesign with the comments we just discussed, and second by Mr. Insua. This is a roll call. Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mr. Insua. Yes. Mr. Yu? Yes. And Madam Chair Palmer? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes 4 0. All right. Uh, we have a number of minutes uh, on to approve tonight. And actually, um, aside from July 14th and August 25th, um, we are able. To, you, you've got a, a quorum to approve them or dis, uh, discuss them. So the ones we can't approve are which? July 14th and August 25th, uh, we would need um, Mr. Simonian. But all the other... August 4th? August 4th we're okay with. Oh, August 25th. The only, yeah, the only two that we, so we cannot... Decide on are the uh, 14th of July and the 25th of August. Okay. Right. Yeah, I wasn't here on the 14th of we'll July. We'll do the June 30 or the April 21st. I don't have any comments on that. So. You know, June. I don't, did not get copies of them, so I can't. Oh, you didn't. I'd be happy to read through Are them real quick. You here though? I was here for some of these. I. I Look on the, you can see if what staff listed on the. Is this the general pack that we received about two weeks ago? We all, we've all gotten yeah. this at well, one time. Because um, I read all the minutes then. You received this pack about a week ago. 
but we, yeah, right, and we right. couldn't vote. A, the, but no. there are some in here. Correct. That, very good. Correct. I, okay, well, I read those and correct. I was good right. with the ones that I read and it, I attended. Them. If if I could suggest, if Board Member Ellis would like a moment to read through the minutes, we could take a very brief recess while he does that. I I, I wasn't here on the fourteenth of July, but you can't vote on no. that. Right? Is here for the workshops? Yeah, I'll, the um, October twenty first minutes. He 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 wasn't a board member, but um, Mr. and Sue is here. Miss Palmer is here. Mr. Yu is here. So well, why don't you guys vote on that? Let me look at the June thirtieth one real quick. And, yeah, uh, no problem on the twenty first. But it looks like all the other ones you I, were a board member. Other than, yeah, and I wasn't. There a, were a couple I didn't of attend them the fourteenth. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I move to approve minutes April twenty first, August fourth, and August eleventh. Second. I made the motion. Okay, Mr. Insu, did you second it? Was yes. that it? Okay, this will be a roll call uh, for approval of minutes of August. Uh, I'm sorry, of April 21st, August 4th, August 11th. Uh, Mr. Yu. Yes. Mr. Insua. Yes. Miss Palmer. Yes. Okay, this one works for me. <clears throat> a motion to approve minutes June 30th. I'll second. Okay, there's a motion to approve the minutes of June 30th. Uh, Mr. Ellis seconded. Yes. This will be a roll call. Uh, Mr. Yu? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mr. Insua? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Great. Thank you. So those two have to wait for art. Workshop. Good job. job. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, that's all I have tonight. The workshop ones we will not? We no. don't have to announce those, or? August 4, 11, and 25? Uh, 25 we can't do, but. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we, we will just hold over August, uh, I'm sorry, July 14th and August 25th till the but next August meeting. August 11th and the 4th? Yeah, we, could, we did those, those were approved. the first motion. Oh, that was yeah. the first those motion. Those were approved, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you guys are writing right over there. <laughs> quick, I quick, sign them all. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I move.